the news tonight. President Muhammad Buhari receives Zamfara State Governor. Military action against insurgency tops discussion. Kwara State takes step to rid major streets of street beggars. Nigerians expresses disappointment over Igu's unceremonious exit from Afghan. Good evening and thanks for joining us on the news tonight. Reaching you from the studio of NTA Djibouti. My name is Joel Mukbola. Now the news in details. Governor Belu Muhammad Matawale of Zamfara State has formally briefed President Muhammad Buhari on the ongoing military action against criminal gangs in his state, describing it as massive, fulfilling, and reassuring. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo has the report. During his last visit to the State House on the 17th of this month, Governor Bello Muhammad Matawali told Nigerians that President Muhammad Buhari had given marching orders to the nation's armed forces to deal decisively with all the criminal gangs threatening lives and property in the state. And six days after, the governor is here to give the president a feedback on the military action which he said is yielding the desired result. <laughs> I briefed him on what happened yesterday. Uh, it was the first time for this operation in that forest. Gando forest is where all those criminals dispatched from other places like in Sokoto, Casina are hiding. Since the happiness of this banditry, that Gando forest was never been visited, but uh, Alhamdulillah, with the security operation of yesterday, the day before yesterday and yesterday, they have recorded a lot of successes. So I come to thank Mr. President for that. I assure you, within limited time, Zampara State will be free of that uh, banditry activities, inshallah. So as a result of these operations, some people might be suffering and told hardship. What will you be telling them? Any support needed by uh, the community, the government is there for them, and we are going to provide some uh, relief for most of them. And Alhamdulillah, as you see yesterday, many cows were recovered from this bandit, and the security agencies are moving those cows to the headquarters so that those who own the cows should come and identify their own animals and will be handed over to them. Governor Bello Matawali also briefed the president on his engagement with the president of Niger, Mohamed Bazoum. The governor was in Niami at the instance of the Nigerian leader to deliver a special message to his Nigerian counterpart on security issues. Details on his engagement with President Bazoum the second time in one month were, however, not disclosed. From the State House, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibado has paid condolence visit to your state to commiserate with the government and the people over the death of late Ulubado of Ibadan, Oba Saliu Adetunji, late Shon of Ogumosho, Oba Olaumi Oyeumi Ajagmade III, and late Alao Akala, a former governor of the state. State House correspondent Jide Unifade has that report. <laughs> The Vice President, who was received by Governor Sheima Kindi of your state on behalf of the President and Nigerians, commiserates with the family and the people of Ogbomosho for the loss of the monarch, late Oladoni Oyewumi Ajagumbade III, Shon of Ogbomosho, who reigned for 48 years before his death on the 2nd of January 2022. He has delivered four decades and eight years of exceptional and transformational leadership leaving behind the indelible, indelible marks of peace and prosperity. Without doubt, the Oba's passing has created a big vacuum among the League of Traditional Rulers in Nigeria. And this is not just because of his age. In almost half a century on the throne, it's because he was not just there. He made remarkable contributions to Obomosho and to Nigeria, for which he was honored twice. First as commander of the Order of the Niger, and then as commander of the Federal Republic, CON and CFR. After the church service, the vice president visits the palace of the Shong and interacts with the family and chiefs. Vice President Oshimbaju also visits the home of the Akalas, where he pays glowing tribute to later Lawa Akala, one-time governor of Oyo State, who died on the 12th of January 2022 at the age of 71. 
was uh, so kind, so generous, and so loving. And um, so that that was my first impression of him. But since then, of course, as you know, he was possibly one of the most astute politicians to come out of uh, uh, the Southwest. And indeed, uh, he was, of course, as you know, uh, governor in Oyo State. And I think that um, one thing that will remain evergreen in our memories is uh, the way that he did w what he did in Oyo State and all of it. Peace has been restored in Akbata Kajola in the Meko area of Ogun State following the clash in the area on Friday, January 14, 2022, which allegedly claimed some lives and property worth millions of Naira destroyed. Tokwe Alabi reports. Commiserating with the bereaved families about the unfortunate incident, a delegation from the Ogun State government led by the director of Ogun State Emergency Management Agency, Ulufolarige, in an on-the-spot assessment to the area called for calm and urged the communities involved in the crisis to allow peace to reign. The team, while sympathizing with those who lost their farm harvests kept in the silos and others whose houses were set ablaze, promised government assistance. We are going to report back to the state government for necessary assistance to the people. And so we plan for the state government to come to the aid for succor, at least, so they can, their life, they can start their life back. The chairman in Mekwafo, local government, Yahaya Fadipe, advised the residents of the affected communities to live in peace and harmony. Don't betray yourselves because some will do that for what they want to eat, betraying their people. It is not good. Normalcy has since been returned to the area as farmers are returning to their farms while those whose property were destroyed are expectant of government assistance. From Apata Kajola in Imekwafon, local government area of the state, Tokbe Alabi, NTA News. The Kwara state government is taking bold steps to reach some major streets in Lorin, the state capital of the menace of street begging through enforcement of the law which prohibits the act. An agreement has therefore been signed by government and representatives of the Hausa community in the state. Radliat Ibrahim reports. Streets begging on major roads in Ilori has become an eyesore with many criticizing the development. The Quara State Street Begging Prohibition Law 2006 sets certain punishment and penalty for street begging, which attracts a fine of up to 5,000 naira or imprisonment of up to three months. According to the Commissioner for Social Development, Abbas Ediaremu, it has become imperative to rid some major streets of beggars. Now we do evacuate them. We identify their state, their town, where it comes from. Secretary to the head of beggars in Ilorin, Muhammad Lawal, in a telephone interview with me, said the group will cooperate with the state government in controlling the activities of beggars in Ilorin metropolis. Some respondents applaud the move, but want government to provide alternative source of livelihood for them. Well, it's good that the government cancel or take out street begging entirely so that the society will be free from insecurity and other crime. Uh, except if the government go ahead to provide a better solution to helping this category of people so as not to go about begging. It's an answer to the society. Our street will be free. Uh, these are the people that you see in the night that turn to nuisance. Streets where beggars will soon be evacuated in a are Tanker Roundabout, Unity, Challenge, Akmadu Belo Way, Post Office Area and Gerin Alimi Underpass Bridge. Rally at Ibrahim. NTA News. You're still watching the news at 7 on NTA Jehudi. The news continues after this message. Atiba University AU Inga we trust Atiba University Knowledge our light to the world Knowledge we seek Knowledge we give, knowledge our creed, knowledge our key to change our world, make it a better place. God has strength, knowledge our key. Atiba University, A.U. Hey,
Richard, we trust at Eber University. Knowledge, our light to the world. We learn to live, we learn to live, we learn to exert and be self so You're welcome back. And now, sports. The early exit of the Super Eagles of Nigeria has been blamed on overconfidence lack of team spirit, tactical indiscipline, among other factors. Correspondent coach respondent has, said, has expressed disappointment at the early exit of the team. The report. Many Nigerians was high in view of the superlative performance of the Super Eagles of Nigeria in the group stage, having amassed nine maximum points in Group D. The hope of many Nigerians was dashed following a performance that leaves much to be desired and sent AFCON favorite Nigeria crashing out of the competition in the second round. The real performance by the Carthage Eagles of Tunisia, especially the tactical discipline, prevented the free-flowing attacking football of the Eagles, according to the respondent. This is terrible. I know you believe that the people that win us. But we will take it as will of God. Because all those boys play match normal. In the 10 against level, they try to play, try the effort to win the match bet. They can make it, they don't make it. It happens like that. One must surely lose, and actually, one must surely win. So, for me, oh, as I see how Super Eagle play, they have tried. But what I know is that it's not their luck. It happens like that. So, not, not much argument there. The coach as a man, a try in best. He put the player that is supposed to play, but unfortunately at the end of the match they lose the match. I noticed something about it before the genesis of the match, as I just today people have been commentary about the not be using or I mean that should not introduce uh, uh, Alex in Wobi to the match right from the genesis and to me it's a very nice match but uh, due to the incomplete of the incompetent of the those boys that are playing they are not playing as a team they just play whatever they know in that they don't even play at the i mean to the coach instruction because i saw the uh, uh, uh show. Uh, he tried his best but his only lord does know what is going to end of the match but to me about a gravon he made a simple mistake for introducing uh, alex Iwobi to the match in fact, I don't know. They disappoint us. Because everybody was hoping that's our last hope, actually. We were comfortable making them to lose everything yesterday. It was a, one of the biggest surprises for New Year for us. They lose the match. So even me yesterday, <laughs> it was a surprise. Though, but I believe that Nigeria, nothing... Let me not say it online. Let me not say it. It was a very big, 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 big disgrace for us. And I don't have anything. They should come back home. Because if we tell them to prepare, we comfortable is making them. I don't know. I don't have any advice for this time around. They made me yesterday and I couldn't eat yesterday night. 2023 is another AFCON year for the Super Eagles to redeem for the Super Eagles to redeem their image. It is hope they will do so. In Ijebode, Joel Okbola, NC News. To end the news, there is a recap of our major stories. President Muhammadu Buhari has received Zamfara State Governor with military action against insurgency being the focus of the discussion. The Kwara State Government has taken a bold step to read major streets in the Lorry, the state capital of street beggars. And lastly tonight, we inform you that Nigerians have expressed disappointment over the early exit of the Super Eagles of Nigeria from African Cup of Nations holding in Cameroon. And that does it on the news tonight. The news continues with the revival language immediately after the break with Sheldon Adekoya. Thanks for staying with us.